Welcome back guys, it's Nurse Nick. Time to talk about those GI drugs and pharmacology. So I'm Nick, I'm American Heart Association ACLS PALS instructor. I'm also an emergency department nurse and a pharmacology instructor at the college. Today we're gonna continue, this is video two of the GI drugs, all right? So with these medications, we're gonna start into your laxatives. Uh, one big thing to consider is if you have a bowel obstruction, you're not gonna give any by laxatives, it's contraindicated in bowel obstructions. So only if people are a little bit constipated whenever these prescribes, but you don't give them for bowel obstructions, you can cause a perforation. So the first medication is gonna be psyllium, all right? Psyllium is that uh, bulk forming laxative. Um, you might know this as Metamucil. Anybody heard of Metamucil before? Yeah. So uh, Metamucil is usually given in a little powder. If you're gonna mix it in some water, you're gonna drink it. This increases your bulk, it forms up your stool, so it helps people eliminate with ease, all right? Uh, a lot of NQUEX questions when they ask you about laxatives in general, they're gonna ask you how they specifically work because there's a few different types. So the next one is gonna be your decussate or your colase. Every time I've given this medication, no matter what environment it is, it always seems to be like a little small orange gel pill every single time, all right? So decussate or colase, this is gonna be a surfactant laxative. What it does is it brings in fluid and softens the stool. It's a um, stool softener. The next one is bisocaudil, or also known as dolcolax. Well, this can be bought over the counter. And what bisocaudil, or dolcolax does, it stimulates GI motility, right? So it moves, it creates peristalsis. Now the next medication, which is the fourth one, the last laxative we're gonna go over, this is osmotic laxative, and this is magnesium. Magnesium is a heavy hitter. We talk about magnesium all over the place. But mag magnesium, or mag citrate is what we give in the emergency department, we'll pres we, they'll prescribe this and give us a jar, right? And then before the patient gets discharged, we're gonna listen, you take this jar and you open it and drink it when you get home. And they're like, oh, well, should I just drink it now? No, magnesium, mag citrate, causes explosions, okay? This does terrible things to people's bathrooms. So magnesium, the way that it works, it draws in the water and increases peristalsis. It is the heavy hitter. So the laxatives we talk about, the four of them we just talked about, psyllium is also metamucil. You pour the powder in, it's a bulk former. The next one was the decussate or colase. And this medication is usually a little orange gel pill. This is the stool softener, draw some water in. The dolcolax or bisocaudil stimulates GI motility and peristalsis. And then mag citrate or magnesium hydroxide is the heavy hitter that pulls in the water, works both ways, and increases peristalsis. So the next GI medication that we're gonna talk about is ondestron. So ondestron is actually Zofran. Zofran is called, it's an antiemetic. What is an antiemetic? This is given for nausea. So uh, they say this drug was actually created for cancer oncology patients. And a lot of NQUEX questions around uh, Zofran or Ondestrone, which is what you need to remember it as. Uh, this medication can commonly cause headaches or this medication does have a risk for widening QT intervals, okay? It, it increases the width, the QRS is the depolarization of your ventricles. T wave is the repolarization, so it widens the length from contraction to, re to resting of your ventricle. It puts you at risk for dysrhythmias, all right? So uh, other NCLEX questions are about administration of aldosterone. Do you wanna give Zofran or aldosterone after somebody gets nauseated, or should you proactively or preventatively give this medication if you know that you're gonna create nausea with somebody? and you wanna proactively give this medication, you wanna give it you know, 15, 20 minutes before. Uh, Odesterone is also given uh, ODT, it can be given under the tongue for absorption, and what do you know about uh, medications that are given under the tongue sub sublingual? They're, they're absorbed very fast, they work very, very quickly, all right? So the next anti-medication -medi uh, is also an antihistamine, and a lot of people don't know this is an antihistamine, but Finnergan, which you need to remember is promethazine. This is an antihistamine. We give it to people for nausea, right? But antihistamine, what's the other antihistamine we talked about? Diphenhydramine, Benadryl. This makes sense now. 
Because when you give it to Finnegan, Finnegan to people, you're going to tell them you might feel drowsy. It causes drowsiness, makes people tired, right? So promethazine or Finnegan, it's an antihistamine. It's going to be given for nausea. It can cause drowsiness. But with this medication, there are some safety considerations. If you're going to give it IV, you need to push it very slowly. You need to always have it diluted in normal saline. This medication is a strong vesicant. I'm sure you know that this is given a lot for nausea. So you can imagine if somebody has an infiltration versus an extravasation, huh, what are those two things? You should ask yourself. Well, an infiltration is when a, a vein can burst, like if it was normal saline, and those fluids can be absorbed in the tissues. An extravasation is when it's a vesicant that goes into the tissues. And this can cause a lot of irritation and sometimes necrosis. Finnergan is terrible for this. If you want to look up some bad things Finnergan can do, pause the video, Google Finnergan extravasation. They're serious. So it needs to be diluted, needs to be pushed slow, and whenever capable, put it through a larger uh, IV or a larger vein. You want it more proximal, right? You don't want to put it in a 24 gauge that's in the, in the hands. You don't want to do that. So the next medication that we're going to go over, this is going to be given for hepatic encephalopathy. Generally people, when they have liver problems, they might have increased ammonia levels. So this is a laxative called lactulose or cephalac. This medication lactulose is going to make your patient have diarrhea or poop or eliminate, excuse me, eliminate a lot more, right? So what it does is it binds up in your GI tract, it binds ammonia to it, so it eliminates the ammonia. Well, you should ask yourself, what is my patient going to look like with hyperammonism or, or, or high ammonia levels? They are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. These patients, are um, they're not alert and oriented. A lot of the times they're very confused and they can act very, very erratic. So I don't mean to take things lightly because it can be a very set, a serious set of circumstances. It is reversible. When you correct ammonia levels, people do come out of it, and then that's how you can identify, how do I know the medication is being effective? If you want to identify effectiveness of medication, if people come down to a more baseline situation where they're, more, they're cognitively more aware and understanding the circumstances around them. So lactulose is given for people with high ammonia that have liver problems, and it makes them eliminate to get rid of the ammonia. This can cause GI upset, and any time that it causes diarrhea or fluid changes, you should look at your electrolytes. This medication may also cause hyperglycemia. So that's going to wrap up this video for now. There's going to be another video on the series for the uh, rest of the GI drugs. Um, after each segment of the series, I will go over one long video. That's the quick and dirty for you guys to review after you get all these um, kind of taken into consideration. All right. So I'm Nick. Like, follow. Plenty more farm to come. Thanks, guys.